the Minnesota Vikings. Another one of these teams is hanging around three and five in this wild card picture. I tell you, I feel better about the Vikings than I do about the 49ers. So that's why I chose this game and wanted this on our schedule more than I wanted to talk about the Niners going into Los Angeles or facing the Rams on Monday night. I feel much better about the Vikings. They at least have a good offense. They are competitive in games. They took the Baltimore Ravens down to the wire because that's what the Vikings do. They just take teams down to the wire. Thank God we both picked the Ravens last week, though. The Chargers. You know, like the Titans, I hate picking Chargers games. I'm just going to say it. I hate picking the Chargers because I think I've bet wrong on them pretty much all year. I think I am just so off on gauging Chargers games. When I think they'll win, they lose. When I think they lose, they win. Justin Herbert has struggled in recent weeks. Yes, they beat the Philadelphia Eagles on the road, but you look at the two performances in front of that, you talk about him against the Patriots, you talk about him against the Ravens. Those are some bad outings, and what teams are starting to do is they're just starting to take away Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and make him have to use that third wide receiver or get a running game that, as much as I love Austin Eckler, he's not a between-the-tackles runner. And their inability to generate a standard or a normal pass or normal rushing attack has put this offense in some bad positions. Not to mention that, again, they're one of the worst rushing defenses in football, and they got to go against Dalvin Cook this week. It's hard for me to bet on the Vikings because I don't know what to do with the Vikings either. This is a game that I could just flip a coin and pick a team because I don't have like a... Would you like to pick the opposite of me? I think you got to catch me by like two games right now so maybe this yeah is your i chance. am struggling here so let me hear it who are you going with i am rolling with the san diego superchargers even though they're not in san diego anymore but uh, i like the chargers this week um the flavor of the month word for people who like pretend they know football analysis but aren't actually like watching film like myself like I pretend I know a lot about football but I'm not like sitting down and watching film but the the flavor of the the month is two high safeties because uh we're going to talk about the Chiefs in a minute but that's the strategy that people have used to take away the Chiefs which is basically like we used to say all the time well if you take away Tyree Kill you're going to get burned by Travis Kelsey But then no one actually tried to be like, well, what if we took away Tyree Kill and then dared you to and then covered the middle on Kelsey? Like, what if we tried to do both? And lo and behold, that actually worked. And Patrick Mahomes doesn't know how to play against too high safety coverage. So teams just took that and said, well, what if we did the same thing to the Chargers? And they started doing the same thing to the Chargers over the last three weeks. When we talk about the Ravens game, the Patriots game, and the Eagles game, people just said, what if we did the same thing everyone's doing to the Chiefs and applied it to the Chargers? And lo and behold, the Chargers offense looks kind of neutered. Justin Herbert's extremely accurate. This is the difference between Herbert and Patrick Mahomes in this respect is that when the Chiefs get in trouble, their default is to just keep trying over and over again. When they take away the big ball with Justin Herbert, his tendency is to turn into Teddy Bridgewater where he's going like 19 for 21, but he's averaging like four yards in the air per pass to like Donald Parnum and whoever else is a wide receiver for the Chargers other than Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. So the game plan is just check down to running backs all the time. Once you take away the big ball and the Chargers are generating enough points, but their defense is not as good as their offense. And so the Patriots score a bunch of points. The Eagles can score a bunch of points against them. The Ravens obviously dropped like 34 against the Chargers defense, which is, it's good, not great. Similar to the Dallas Cowboys. It's like, it's fine. It's a middle of the road defense for the Chargers this year. The problem this week is that the Vikings defense is, uh, and this is a direct quote from uh, someone on Twitter. uh, The Vikings defense is bare booty ass cheeks. And so uh, I think the Chargers will be able to take them over the top. And uh, I think the Chargers are going to win this game pretty big, actually. Now, Kirk Cousins can score 34 points any given week. He could also score 16 against Cooper Rush. (laughs) This is a game that is going to finish with Kirk Cousins down six, one minute length of the field, no timeouts against Phillip Rivers' former team, where for my entire childhood, for 10 consecutive seasons from age seven to age 17. I had to watch Phillip rivers down six, one minute to go, no timeouts length of the field. So uh, with that being said, 
I'll take the Chargers to win this week. <laughs> it's funny to think that both these franchises are facing each other because both of these franchises do similar type things where they have that situation come up so many times in their games. It's going to be interesting to see who escapes that purgatory. Well, I guess that box me in the corner here. I'm taking the Vikings then where I think the Vikings can succeed in this game. You mentioned their defense. It's going to maybe a little bit of a shootout type performance, but if they can run the ball, which every team has been able to run the ball on the chargers, I think that that's their opportunity to develop an early lead and milk time of possession. And Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, both of these guys, I feel very confident in their ability to do such. I was saying that I think Dalvin Cook could be the number one fantasy running back this week, even ahead of Jonathan Taylor against the Jaguars, because I think that this Chargers defense just ineffective. They have been gashed every step of the way. Dalvin Cook, obviously one of the most elite running backs in football. I think that's the opportunity for the Vikings win. And yes, Kirk Cousins can do just enough to move the ball on third downs, uh, get Justin Jefferson, get Adam Thielen involved. I mean, I don't feel good about either one of these teams, but I can at least say that I think I see the pathways for the Vikings to win this game. And to update people, I said earlier that the Chargers are a meth defense. According to Football Outsiders, they are ranked 21st in defensive DVOA so far this season. So Chargers are a meth defense. That's probably not what you want to hear when you hired a defensive coordinator to be your head coach, because that's bare minimum where you expect him to shine. Uh, but Brandon Staley is a new age defensive coordinator where he comes from an offensive background and only spent one year as a defensive coordinator under Sean McVay and was apparently blessed by the magical Sean McVay gift of transforming an offense from terrible Anthony Lynn into a top 10 unit. See, if the Chargers season continues to spiral or takes a bad nosedive here, then all the praise and admiration that we threw on Brandon Staley at the early part of the season will be an interesting thing to kind of follow where people kind of view him after the season if the Chargers continue to struggle 